2018, San Antonio, Texas. We're here at the San Antonio Aquarium. It's July, so families are about, kids aren't in school, so no field trips, maybe some camps. And most notably, everything seems fine in the rock pool area. The day is cooking along as planned until something goes terribly wrong. Behind the scenes, some alarms that are hooked up to their saltwater tanks start going off. This is not good. One alarm goes off on one tank, then another, then another. All of the direction of this staff is focused on this saltwater problem behind the scenes. When finally the dust is settled and they have been able to address the saltwater tank issue, they come back to the rock pool area and discover that a fish is missing. Someone has stolen a horn shark from the touch tanks in the rock pool section of the aquarium. This, paired with the monitors going off in the saltwater tanks, makes it seem like this was a coordinated attack. The 2018 San Antonio Shark Heist. Here's the story. This is an Odd Animal Specimens animal story. Thank you so much for checking out this channel. If you'd like to see more videos like this, go to patreon.com slash oddanimalspecimens, where we post new bonus videos every week. I think the bonus video we're putting out this week is uh, we're taking a look at a marlin and the giant scleral rings on that marlin skull. It's absolutely sick. So if you'd like to see videos about some unusual specimens, some behind the scenes tours of the natural history museums that I'm checking out, and other animal stories like this, hop on over to Patreon dot com slash odd animal specimens thanks so much here's the shark heist so what was going on behind the scenes when all those alarms are going off um, the animal husbandry team at the san antonio aquarium was quick to jump into action when they checked out all the tanks they have found that they tested extraordinarily high for bleach uh, bleach should not be in fish tanks this was very clearly a problem but luckily they sprung into action like immediately and uh, put something in the tank called sodium Theosulfate. This counteracted all of the bleach that was being distributed from the filtration system to all of the other saltwater fish tanks. So they solved that problem, but there was another problem that they didn't solve, and that was the missing shark in the touch tanks in the rock pool area. So what did this thief steal? What sort of shark? Well, one of these guys. Let's crack this open and take a closer look. We'll go to the overhead for this. Hell yeah. That's what we're looking at. It's a lot of focus, so we'll go here. Okay. Oh, brilliant. So this is a horn shark. It's a saltwater fish, some sort of a shark. They have a number of unique identifying features that makes it pretty easy to tell if something's a horn shark or not. First, if you look kind of straight on, there are a couple really neat things. One, these huge like brows, they're called supraorbital ridges just like almost Neanderthal-like brows above those eyes. And also, if you can take a look, the nose, they kind of have these weird little pig noses with these snouts that curl over. It's another really unique feature. But the cool thing about these sharks are the spines on their, um, on their dorsal fins. Let me see. There's a little spine right there on that dorsal fin and also on this dorsal fin on the back. You can catch it right there. Horn sharks are pretty unusual, but they're very docile in the water, which means that they're, I don't know, great fish for touch tanks and things like that. But the unique trait about horn sharks isn't necessarily on, on, on their body. So this right here is a horn shark egg. Oh man, that looks great. So this is the hard shell within which the embryo will grow. And it's kind of shaped like a screw or something like that. Some people describe it as an auger, but here's the thing, so female horn sharks are gonna lay eggs like this, and then they'll literally screw it into like a crevice or a, like a cranny in between rocks or something like that, so it can't blow away or blow away, drift away in, in the current, and nothing can kind of drag it. That's pretty unreal. So immediately after they rea realized that something had been heisted and thieved from the aquarium, the natural thing that the aquarium staff did was 
check the security footage. And luckily for them, they had a camera pointed directly on the touch tanks in the rock pool area. So let's check it out now and see if you can identify the people thieving this shark from the tank. Okay, here we go. We have a family in the middle. It seems like there's a hallway this way down here. This is the touch tank area over here. And this is um, just kind of, I think another section of tanks that people can look into. And I think there are some stairs over here and that's where people are heading. So who looks suspicious? This lady hoisting up her pants. Hmm? This person's rummaging in their purse. What's going on there? This person's walking pretty quickly. Pony over there. Let's take the shark. Let's escape that way. You see that guy? Let's run it back. So he came over from this direction. It's this dude. Oh, wait. Okay, so it's this guy over here. He shifts over the side. He reaches in, grabs something. And then that guy's a towel over there. Oh man. <laughs> so this is the th this is the theft in action. Ready? He reaches in, can't grab the shark. Shifts around to the other side, reaches in, can grab the shark, grabs it out, nobody responds. This dude right here, perhaps his buddy, goes follows him, towel in hand. So after analyzing all of the security footage at the aquarium, this, the, the aquarium staff came down to this sequence of events. Over in the touch tank area, this guy and this guy were sitting in these chairs and staking out the area for a couple hours. Eventually, I don't know, maybe they thought some somebody wasn't looking. One of them went over and grabbed a shark out of the touch tank. This guy was waiting with a towel. He booked it this way. This guy came behind him and they wrapped the shark in a towel. Then get this. Then they went to a specific closet in a behind the scenes area where they found a bucket. That bucket was full of bleach. Rather than dumping out this bleach into a sink, what they did was they dumped the bucket of bleach into the salt water filtration system, which immediately began distributing the bleach to the rest of the salt water tanks. They then put their shark wrapped in a blanket in a bucket and put that bucket in a baby stroller and then strollered that shark bucket out to the parking lot while everyone was dealing with the salt water tank issue inside, they were able to slip away. It seems like a pretty premeditated, thought out shark heist. And also insane. <laughs> So here's what the aquarium had. They had the security footage. They had some blurry photos of, of this guy and his accomplices, accomplices, and they had a picture of their truck. This is when the case is taken over by the chief, by Chief Salviago of the Leon Valley Police Department. He's the one who takes all of their information that, that the aquarium has gathered and just blasts it on social media, thinking someone's going to recognize this guy or his truck or know, have a friend who's just like crazy about sharks or selling stuff online. Perhaps maybe this is a good way to get tips. And sure enough, it was. This seems like a great time to take a little bit of a break. If you're enjoying this video so far and you'd like to see more, think about supporting the channel on patreon.com slash odd animal specimens. Also, big thank you for the University of Michigan Museum of Zoology. That's where a lot of these specimens came from. The University of Michigan Museum of Zoology is primarily a research institution, and all of these preserved animal specimens are used in some sort of research. This one specifically was used in a research project in the 1970s to reorganize an entire family tree of sharks. And this guy right here helped it happen. So University of Michigan Museum of Zoology, pretty awesome. Thank you. So where are we? Chief Salviago of the Leon Valley Police Department is setting out tips online, and sure enough, the tips come, come flooding in. The first thing that they find is a, a Facebook post. So check this out. This is a post to, um, by Robert Barriaga Jr. Selling a horn shark. Perfect for the next shark week. 
$300 San Antonio, Texas. Alive and well, just took out of the tank for a quick pick. So this does look like a horn shark. It kind of looks like it has that spike in the back dorsal fin. But the thing about, I don't know, social media is everybody's looking for the meme. I don't know if the police looked into this guy or they looked into the post a little bit more, but shortly after news broke, about the, the the shark heist and shortly after news kind of started spreading around the nation this dude took down this post he might have been contacted by police i'm not really sure but they ultimately decided that this was a bit of a red herring but what they did get a lot of tips about was this photo of the truck tips were flooding in about the guy who owned this truck the guy's name was anthony shannon the police were able to, to acquire a photo of this man, send it to the aquarium, and someone recognized this guy in the aquarium staff. We're talking about Jamie Shank. She's the like assistant director of um, animal husbandry at the aquarium or something like that. And the second she looked at this photo, she was like, I know this guy. This guy came to the aquarium a couple months ago and identified himself as a representative from the company Instant Ocean. Instant Ocean is a salt distributor. Think about it, saltwater tanks. You gotta add, add salt to them. Anthony Shannon contacted the aquarium saying that he worked for Instant Ocean and that they had recently delivered them a bad batch of salt. He said he would like to come in and test the saltwater quality of all of the tanks to make sure that nothing was being no, nothing was off. Without thinking twice about it, apparently the aquarium allowed him to come. And and Jamie Shank personally gave this man a behind the scenes kind of tour and walkthrough of all of their tank areas for a couple hours, months prior. This is kind of suspicious. <laughs> so Chief Salviago of the Liam Valley Police Department takes Jamie and they go and visit Anthony Shannon's house. They knock on the door. Anthony opens up, says hello, and welcomes them inside. And what do they see? A giant saltwater tank, and inside is a horn shark. The police instantly start questioning Anthony. Where did you get this horn shark? What's going on? And he presents them with a receipt that the police say looks unusual it looks a little bit doctored he claims that he purchased this shark somewhere but jamie shank is there luckily and she is able to identify this shark as their shark from the museum which the man vehemently denies that night something must have been going on maybe anthony had a change of heart maybe he felt the walls kind of closing in on him but he called the police and confessed to the crime. But this is not the end of our story. Not at all. Apparently he was charged with felony theft for $2,500 to $30,000 and his bail was set at 10 grand. Here's the thing though. <clears throat> okay, let's review really quickly. Anthony posed as a representative for a salt distributor in order to gain access to behind the scenes areas of the aquarium. Months later, he went to the aquarium with a friend and scouted out the touch tank for a few hours before jumping in, stealing a horn shark, going back, finding his way to a behind the scenes area where he was able to get a bucket and dump bleach into the fil saltwater filtration tank to seemingly cause a diversion or distract the museum staff while he could slip away with this shark. It seems as though this man is guilty as can be, but not according to him. <laughs> Here's an interview of Anthony Shannon after he was released on bail. Let's see what he has to say about his supposed crime. I actually took a shark, which was wrong, but it needed help at that point in time, and I had stuff with me due to previous experiences from where I was at. The shark needed help. Key point number one, he says the shark needed help. As an activist, you know, I have a mission. So it's not a mission to steal for profit, it's a mission just to give the fish a better health. No, no hiding fish from anybody else. The fish had full access when they asked for it. 
Not necessarily. They brought in, the police came in and he provided um, a bogus receipt claiming he had purchased the shark. He tried to intentionally mislead the police. Sorry, continue. I said that I was coming over there. I said a salt distributor basically told her that Anthony Shannon was gonna come there. So I did represent myself to be there. I gained access and I looked at what they were doing and they showed me the dead animals. I examined them and I was looking at seeing why they had so many problems. Okay. And I found quite a few. Okay, he found some problems. Got it. Oh yeah, I knew the police department was gonna come here and I kept the shark here so they can recover. I talked to the police on the phone, told them I would sign a consent to come in the house. There was really no need to get a search warrant because they have full access to the shark. It's in the house, you know, in the tank right here. And they can take it. The owner of the shark can still come over here and see that it's in good health now. It turns out Anthony Shannon was a guy who really liked fish. He claims that he was some sort of an activist or something like that, who, I don't know, maybe had suspicions about what was going on at the aquarium, or maybe does just doesn't like aquariums in general. He said that he gained access to the aquarium um, through a salt distributor. He claims that during the behind the scenes tour, he witnessed or saw some dead fish, and then he thieved the dead fish because he thought he could put it in, in a better environment or something like that. What do you think? Is Anthony Shannon guilty or not? A passionate activist or a red-handed crook? Either way, thanks so much. Think about supporting on Patreon, and that's the story of the greatest aquarium heist of all time.